Hi, this is Callan Bentley. Welcome back for another Smart Figure. After watching this video, you should be able to describe mineral hardness, where it comes from, how to measure it, and why it's useful in identifying minerals. So here's an example of a mineral. We can see that it's sort of transparent and light colored. Uh, it doesn't appear to have a metallic luster, but how can we identify it? We've got to you know, look at the physical properties of this mineral. And one of the physical properties that's most useful is hardness. It's important to realize that hardness is not mineral strength. It is merely resistance to being scratched. So if you want to figure out a mineral's hardness, you've got to try to scratch it. What should you scratch it with? Whatever's handy. There are certain tools that are common everyday objects that have a known hardness that are useful in assessing mineral hardness. One of them is a penny. So what you do is you simply take your penny, you try and scratch the mineral with it, and once you've done that, if you succeeded in scratching the mineral, as we did here, leaving behind little gouges in the mineral face, then that means that the penny has got to be harder than the mineral. So the mineral is therefore softer than the penny. This is the basic idea behind the Mohs scale of hardness. This is a relative hardness scale developed by a mineralogist named Friedrich Mohs, and it ranges from the softest known mineral, talc, all the way up to the hardest known mineral, diamond. There's eight steps in between those two. Our penny is an example of an object of known hardness. So a penny is a hardness of three and a half. The previous example where we were able to scratch the mineral with our penny means that our mineral must be softer than three and a half. Another object that's often useful is your fingernail. Your fingernail is a two and a half on the Mohs scale of hardness. A wire nail clocks in at 4.5. A knife blade or a piece of glass is 5.5. And the ceramic streak plate that we use for assessing the color of the powdered form of the mineral, that streak plate is a 6.5. So when you're identifying minerals in the laboratory, you basically want to bracket a mineral's hardness between two of these numbers. So for instance, if it is softer than the streak plate, but harder than a piece of glass, that means it's somewhere between a six and a half and a five and a half on the Mohs scale of hardness. Now the Mohs scale of hardness, like I said, is a relative scale. It's not actually an absolute scale. So the difference in hardness between, say, talc and gypsum is actually much less than the difference between corundum and diamond. Just the same, the Mohs scale of hardness is really useful, especially for introductory geology students. Here are six sample minerals that all could look very similar to one another. The fluorite obviously stands out because it's uh, bright purple, but keep in mind that color can really deceive you when it comes to identifying minerals. So rather than relying on color, let's check the hardness of these different minerals. Calcite will clock in at around a three on the Mohs scale of hardness. Dolomite will be about a three and a half. Halite is around a two and a half. Gypsum is around a two. Fluorite is a four. And quartz is a seven. Let's slide that fluorite over to the side here and consider it in a little more detail. If fluorite has a hardness of four, what common everyday objects will scratch it and which ones will be scratched by it? If you answered that the knife the wire nail and the streak plate should all be able to scratch it since fluorite is a four and that fluorite will be able to scratch both a copper penny and your fingernail then that's the answer I was looking for. Good job. It's exactly that kind of logic that you need to use for assessing mineral hardness. Thanks for your attention. This has been another smart figure.